Family Theater presents Van Heflin, Lloyd Nolan, and Audrey Totter. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents The Problem Child Problem, starring Van Heflin and Audrey Totter. To introduce the drama, here is your host, Lloyd Nolan. Thank you, Tony Lafano. Family theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, The Problem Child Problem, starring Audrey Tata as Celia and Van Heflin as Alan. <laughs> Friday Afternoon Mother's Club is holding its regular meeting just through that door in the forum room here in the public library. Let's step on it, hmm? And that's Dr. Ames speaking, Celia Ames, Ph.D., a special goodwill representative of Gilby's Baby Foods. She's an expert on child guidance, wrote a book on the subject called The Scientific Method and Your Child. Maybe you read it. Her lecture's almost over now. Let's stay and catch the wind-up, huh? Shall we? Here's a seat. Now, thank you all on behalf of Gilby's Baby's Food for your kind invitation and your hospitality during my visit. Thank you. Ladies, ladies, thank you, thank you, and Dr. Ames, we all wish to thank you for your splendid visit. You've been an inspiration to us, I'm sure. And ladies, I know you'll all want to write to the people who sent Dr. Ames to us, giblets, baby food. A uh, Gilby's. Uh, uh, yes. And, um, no, ladies, I'm sorry there won't be time for questions for Dr. Ames. She tells me that her visit in our city has ended now, and she must catch the train at 3.30, which means she must leave right away. You just skip on out, Dr. Ames, dear, and we'll go on with our little meeting. Thank you very much again. Thank you, all of you. Goodbye. <laughs> and now, before we all go to our homes, there are two matters that must be taken up. First, I have been asked to... Hello. Leaving too? Yes, I got what I came for. The rest of the meeting doesn't interest me, actually. I'm not exactly a Friday afternoon mother, you know. <laughs> really? Well, whatever kind of mother you are, I enjoyed having you in the audience. Hmm. I don't get to see a masculine face as I talk very often. Well, I felt a little like a displaced person, frankly. But I enjoyed it. My name is Alan Towney. I'm happy to meet you, Mr. Towney. Alan Towney? Oh, now I remember. You wrote Sun in the Mountains, didn't you? Yeah, I'm afraid I'm guilty. My, now I am proud, having a best-selling fiction author in my audience. I read your book, Mr. Towney, and I liked it very much. Thank you. I read your book, too. Oh? And I didn't care much for it. <laughs> oh. I came today to see just what kind of a woman would write that kind of drivel. Well, really? And I was quite surprised. You know, I expected some dried-up old apricot, not a ripe young peach like you turned out to be. Well, I'm not really flattered. I suppose my literary stylist is tasteful to such a master of the art as you. Is that your complaint, Mr. Tony? No, no, no. You, you're right, okay. Look, my car's right over there. Can I uh, give you a ride anyplace? Mm, I don't see a taxi. Yes, you may. I have to go to the station to catch my train. No, it's, it's not your writing, it's what you write. And what's wrong with what I write? Well, it's nonsense. Well, of all the... It just doesn't work. I suppose you know all about rearing children. Well, how many do you have? Children? None, of course. Well, I have a five-year-old boy. I, I tried your scientific method on him. Oh, you did? Yes, and it's nonsense. I suppose Mrs. Towney agrees with that expert conclusion? Well, Mrs. Towney passed away about four years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Philip has had the best of nurses, he's the finest medical care, and he's a problem boy in spite of it all, and your book just didn't help one little bit. Did it ever occur to you, oh great one, 
that the person using the methods in my book has to have a small amount of intelligence, too? Look, I, I think you wrote a very nice, sweet little book, and if a kid is perfectly normal, the ideas you have won't do him very much harm. But if a youngster's really has some adjustments to make, well, that stuff just confuses matters. Here's my card. I've never known anyone as insulting, as conceited, as stupid, Look, as self... You, you can't even take criticism, can you? Can't take criticism? Well, really, that's too much. You're just trying to blame me for your own inept handling of a baby. You're supposed to be a psychologist, and you should know that shouting is just a cover-up for a feeling of insecurity. Insecurity? You're sure. You know I'm right. You don't trust your hocus-pocus yourself. Oh, I wish... Look, I'll find a cab. Yeah, you see? Covering up. Mr. Towney, the best minds in the business, including my own, if you please, have developed what I wrote in my book. It's a scientific way to bring up children. If it doesn't work on that little prodigy of yours, it's not my fault. It's because you haven't sense enough to use the tools I handed you. And I suppose you have. Of course I have. I wrote the book, remember? Ah. Do you want to bet? What? I'll bet you that you yourself couldn't make your book work with Philip. You must be out of your mind. The bet is for $1,000. I'm not interested in making bets, Mr. Tony. All right, then let's, let's make it a salary. You come to work on a real-life problem, and I'll pay you $500 a week. That's $1,000. No. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, I don't blame you. Naturally, you don't want to prove that your book is all that I said it was. Well, that's not it at all. Well, what other reason could you have for turning down a small fortune? Look, I, I wish that your ideas would work. I really do, honestly. I'm worried about this boy of mine. I'd gladly pay you any amount to bring him around. Maybe that was in the back of my mind when I suggested a bet. I don't know, but, but now you and I both admit that your way isn't the answer, so we'll all forget right. about it. All right, Mr. Towney. I'm just going to show you how ignorant and blind you really are. I'll come and spend two weeks my vacation at your house, and I'll help your five-year-old Philip and make you eat every one of your insulting words. That's wonderful, wonderful. You have some spirit, too. And this is going to cost you a thousand dollars. Well, here we are. Uh, Miss Baxter... Mrs. Baxter. Oh, uh, good evening, Miss yes. Baxter. Uh, uh, Dr. Ames, this is our housekeeper, Mrs. Baxter. How do you do? How do, you do? I just love this old farmhouse, Mrs. Baxter. Oh, thank you, Miss Ames. It's a, it's a job to keep up, I'll tell you. Uh, Dr. Ames is a child guidance expert. She's going to uh, be here a couple of weeks trying her hand on Philip, Mrs. Baxter. Oh, well, isn't that grand? It's nice of you, ma'am. You'll like the boy, Miss Ames, in spite of his ways. I hope I shall understand you, Mrs. Baxter. I wish to check Philip's diet later on this evening. Philip's... Diet? Yes, you have his menu written out, haven't you? <coughs> what? Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> well, um, after dinner we can get at that, can't we? Well, how about uh, meeting the son and heir now, shall we? His uh, room is just up the stairs here. You and Mrs. Baxter, you can get together, together later on that. I should think Philip would be playing outdoors this time of the day. Uh, no, no, he doesn't very often. The only playmates he has are the Jenkins children. That's, uh, they're a mile on down. Uh, they get together now and then. Yeah, well, this, this is it for right here. Philip? Son, uh, I'd like you to meet a friend of mine who's coming to stay with us for a while. This is Dr. Ames. Uh, uh well, Aunt Celia. Uh, do you mind, Doctor? You know, Auntie sounds a little foreboding. Oh, <laughs> not at all. And I'm happy to meet you, Philip. My, what a pretty room we have here with all these fine toys and pictures. It must be great fun. Well, uh, son, don't, don't you think you'd, you'd better say hello to Dr. Uh, to Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Celia? Hmm? Hello, Aunt Doctor. Isn't that sweet? Philip, a gentleman always stands up when a lady comes into his room. Son, Dr. Ames is going to think that you don't like her if you don't act a little more friendly. Oh, now, Philip and I are going to get along just fine, I know. Aren't we, Philip? Philip, I wish you'd talk to us. I know you can. You can talk just as well as a grown-up when you want to. Don't you want Auntie Doctor to, to know how smart you are? No. Dr. Ames, I'm sorry, but I... I well, uh... Son, we'll, uh, we'll see you at dinner. Let's have uh, Mrs. Baxter show you your room now, and then you can get settled. Fine. And, Philip, I think you and I are going to get along famously. Don't you worry about it. Bye. Well, you've met the patient, Doctor. And I must say, I didn't notice anything masterful in your treatment so far. Well, Mr. Towney, I have two weeks to prove to you what a bore you are. And if you don't feel like apologizing, then you needn't pay me the, uh... A fee we agreed on. No, you're not ready to give up yet, then, huh? Mm, you better write some more books, Mr. Genius. You'll need the money. <laughs> well, 
That was a grand dinner, Mrs. Baxter. The Townsie household lives very well. Uh, thanks, Miss Ames. Little Philip just picked at his food again, though. Well, I think we can help that situation. I jotted down a menu for him. Let's start it tomorrow, if you don't mind. Well, that's fine. Let's see. And for a while, we'll have him take his meals alone at his own little table, so he won't have grown-ups distracting him. Oh, well, that's a, that's a real nice breakfast there, Miss Ames. Just one thing wrong that I can see. Did I forget something was wrong with it? It's just that Philip won't eat it. <laughs> Mrs. Baxter, starting tomorrow, he will. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Now, Philip, here is your delicious breakfast. I'll let you have just 15 minutes. Then if you haven't finished, or at least just about finished, I'll take the food away. And you won't have anything else till lunchtime. You understand? I don't want any. Well, that's up to you, Philip. Why don't you just sit down at your little table and try some, though? No. I'm not going to force you, Philip. I just want you to know that. Philip, please don't climb up onto the cupboard. I don't want to eat my breakfast. All right, then don't, but come down from that cupboard this instant. I don't want to eat. Philip, you're going to fall. The cupboard is leaning. Come down from... Oh, Philip! <laughs> Philip, are you hurt? I don't want my breakfast. Oh, land of living. Oh, will you look at my kitchen? What in the world is... What happened? Oh, is anyone hurt? Is everything all right? Oh, Philip just had a little accident. He's all right. A little accident? What do you call big? Really now, Doctor, I don't recall reading about this sort of stuff in that book of yours. I don't want to eat my breakfast. I don't know why you have to come rushing into the house like it had fallen in or something. Everything is under control. Yes, I see. All I want is some quiet while I work. But I can hear you controlling things clear across the yard in my study. Uh, Philip, uh, we're through with breakfast now. Go to your room and start picking up your things. I'll join you in a few minutes. I don't want to pick up my things. Philip, you do as you're told and let's have no more money. Funny uh, business. Uh, please, Mr. Towney, that's not the way. Yeah, well, it's working now. He's, he's going. I'll be up in a minute, Philip. Now, you go on out to that little shed of yours, Mr. Towney. I'll take care of the boy. Mrs. Baxter, I'm sorry about the dishes. Let me go see about Philip now, and then I'll come help you clean up the mess. Oh, never mind, Miss Ames. It won't take a minute. Someone has to go to town for more dishes, though, before supper. Well, I'll be out in the workroom. If you uh, think you can uh, keep the house intact, Dr. Ames... Oh, it's too bad to waste them eggs and cereal and things, but... Like I said, Philip, just don't eat breakfast. Philip, have you finished picking up in here? Oh, goodness, you haven't even started. Well, here we go. Let's start with this ball here under the chair. It goes in the toy box, I guess, doesn't it? Philip, dear, come get the ball and put it away. Yes, ma'am. That's a good boy. Now put it in the box over by the bureau where it... No, Philip, in the box. Philip. Philip. Oh, Philip. What's that? Uh, the window got broken. Well, I sort of suspected as much. But how? Who threw the ball? I, oh, it just sort of slipped out of Philip's hand. He threw it? Well, yes, I guess you'd call it that. I probably would. Look, Dr. Ames. If you want to chuck this whole thing right now, I won't hold it against you. Rome wasn't built in a day, Mr. Towney. You don't say. And I have two weeks. Two whole weeks. Well, as I live and breathe, it isn't the famous Mr. Towney sneaking out from his backyard dungeon and into broad daylight. We don't see much of you these days. Well, I've been trying to write. That's how I support my family, you know. Do you always make yourself as scarce around the house as you have the week I've been here? Yes, I do. But usually I accomplish something out there. But what with breaking windows and crashing cupboards and falling bodies and Mrs. Baxter complaining about cooking special food on her old stove and all the other confusions that we've had, I... I haven't had much success. I am sorry, but you'll be glad to know that we're making headway. Philip just ate an enormous lunch. Enormous for him, at least. And guess what he's doing now? Taking bicarbonate of soda. <laughs> <laughs> now he's playing outdoors. I saw the Jenkins children outside and sent Phil out to play with them. Well, I think I'll take a look. Is that uh, permitted, Bob? It is, but don't distract him. I know he'll be busy. Philip, where are the other children? Why are you sitting out here on the porch all alone for? I don't know. Well, are the other children around? Well, it's sure there they are. They're, they're over there by the woodpile. Now, look, why don't you race on down there and get in a game with them? Son, what's the matter, fella? Don't, uh, won't the other kids let you play with them? I don't know. Well, what is it, pal? 
Don't you want to play with the other boys and girls? No, Daddy. Philip, I... I Mr. Towney, well, why don't huh? you go on out to your study now, and Philip and I will busy ourselves with something else. All right, uh, look, just a moment, huh? Before you take over again, do you think that it's going to work, really? Of course it is, but I thought you were sure it wouldn't. Well, I, I wanted to. I love that boy, Dr. Ames, and I, I want him to be happy. He just seems so disinterested in things. Just doesn't seem to care. I know. We'll work on the other things and see if that doesn't correct itself. Now, you go on back to work and don't worry. It's all a matter of using I the... I know, I know. The scientific method. Ah, yes. Fella, my boy, you're going to get as big and as fat as your dad if you keep on eating meals like that one. Look, why don't you go on and do a little exploring for yourself? Why don't you, uh, you know, you don't get out on picnics very often. All right, Daddy. But don't get down too near the creek, dear. Stay where we can see you. All right. I'm going to go see, though. <laughs> He's a healthy-looking rascal, isn't he? And he's certainly a healthier-acting boy lately. I hoped you'd like my idea of coming on a picnic. I wanted you to get a chance to see how well my training is taking effect. Well, I'm, I'm very impressed with your results. I really am. I'll lose that bet gladly. If he would just get a little excited now and then, it's not at all right for him to seem so, well, so low-spirited. No, no. Look at him now, just standing there looking at the water. Poor little guy. Uh, don't, don't get too close to the creek, son. Maybe something will happen in the three days I have left. Well, I'll hate to see you go away. It's been nice having you here. I've enjoyed it. It really hasn't been a bad vacation. You know, I'm sorry about the things that I said before. You're, you're really quite a wonder, Doctor. Why, thank you, kind sir. And uh, I think you're wonderful. Thank you. And beautiful. Oh? And uh, very nice. Oh. And uh, Celia. Uh, Philip, don't get too close. To, uh, Philip! Philip! Fell in the water, quick. All right, take it easy, son. Daddy's coming. There you are. Yeah. You're all right now, aren't you, Phil boy? Oh, well, poor little baby. That was an awful scare, wasn't it? Yeah, one you wouldn't have had if you'd uh, bait us, Phil. Accidents happen, Alan, Mr. Towney. Okay, but is that according to the scientific method, Doctor? It sounds strangely like sentiment to me. My emotions are not involved in any aspect of this whole situation, Mr. Towney. Let's both keep that in mind. Now, Philip, dear, let's hurry to the car and get you dried off. <laughs> Philip, are you in your room, son? Oh, hi, cowboy. How's everything? Hello, Daddy. I thought tonight would be kind of a special night, Phil. Do you know Dr. Ames leaving in the morning? And, well, we want to show her off in style, so you know what I have here? It's a genuine imitation Texas Ranger cowboy seat that's complete with a badge and spurs and everything. Now, how about that? Thanks, Daddy. Philip, you know Daddy is so proud of you lately. You're acting like a real fine boy. Well, I, I guess you know that I'm very pleased with the way you've been behaving, don't you, huh? Well, now, I tell you what. You just climb into them there cowboy duds, and you and me's going to sashay down to the corral, and we'll just talk a spell with Dr. Raines before she leaves, okay? Oh, Daddy, I... Go right ahead, Tex. Open up the package and look at that outfit. <laughs> What's the matter? Uh, son, don't you, feel, don't you feel very well? No, Daddy. I feel all right. You just don't like, uh, feel like... Uh, Make it like a cowboy, huh? Well, that's all right, fella. Look, son, what is it? You, you don't seem to be, uh, well, you don't seem to be happy. Aren't you happy, son? Yeah, I'm happy. Well, you, uh, you get ready for bed, and I'll come in later and tuck you in. Good night, cowboy. Sitting out here in the dark? What's up, Celia? Just sitting. You all ready to leave in the morning? Yes. Well, we, uh, we sure want to thank you, Dr. Ames. Uh, Celia, it's, it's been a good two weeks. We're going to miss you. Philip and I, that is. I'll miss you. You and Philip, I mean. Mm. About Philip, you did a, a grand job. 
I'll have your check in the morning, and you're worth every cent of it. Don't bother. What? You know as well as I do that it's all been a miserable failure. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased. <laughs> oh, Alan. <laughs> what, what is it, Celia? Look, Philip is already... He's different now. Why, he... He's completely unhappy. He hasn't one ounce of interest in anything that happens around him. Little boy should love living, have fun. He, he just exists. No, no. You did a good job, Celia. You did the best you could. That's why I feel so badly. The things I thought were right just don't work. I should have listened to you at first. Now, don't say that. You, you solved most of his problems. Well, except the big one, the basic one. That one defeated me. My so-called scientific method couldn't make him start caring about life and things that happen. Celia, don't... Goodbye, you're... Alan, Mr. Towney. I'm, I'm going to leave tonight right away. I suppose I should thank you for helping me to see myself finally, so thanks and goodbye. Mr. Towney! Mr. Towney! Come quick, That's Mr. Mrs. Baxter. Towney. Something's wrong. What is it, Miss Baxter? Alan, the house. What? It's on fire. Oh, the stove. I was in the other room. It blew it up. The whole back of the house is a fire. Are you hurt? No, just shook up, I guess. Well, look, you go over to the Jenkins and use their phone and call the uh, rural fowl company. Quick. Uh, Alan, where's Philip? I don't know. Uh, did you see Mrs. Baxter? No, but I think... No, he... I, I know where he is. I'll get him. He's in his room upstairs. Oh, no, hurry. You can't, you can't go in the back way. Around to the front. This old matchbox is going up fast. Can't you get in the front way? Yes, I think so. You wait here. Looks like Philip's room is still clear right there in the, in the middle. Oh, be careful, darling. Alan! Alan! Alan, where are you? Here. Here, over here by the stairs. Oh, Alan, are you all right? Yes. Yeah, that step gave, gave way. My ankle twisted. Look, you... You get on out. Helen, you can't walk. No, no, I'll manage. You go on outside. I'm going to Philip's room. Wait, no, Celia, don't try. I, I can make it in a minute. Philip? Philip? Are you in there? Hey, doctor! I'm afraid! I'm coming in to get you. Be a brave boy for a minute longer. Philip, where are you? I'm afraid here, doctor. I'm right here now. Everything's all right. Come out from under the bed and let me pick you up quickly. <laughs> Auntie Doctor. Oh, my precious Philip. Auntie Doctor is so worried. I love you so much. Here, hold your hands around my neck tightly. We have to run for the fire around that doorway again. Celia, Celia, thank God you're safe. Everything's all right. Here's Philip. He's fine. Can we still get out through the front door, do you think? No, it doesn't look like it. That wall's falling apart. Look, we'll have to try that window. Oh, oh, oh. your ankle won't it hold you. No, look, you go on with Philip. I'll make it all right. Don't wait. Hurry. Here, put your arm around me. Don't argue. Why are you doing all this? Because I love you and Philip, you idiot. And if anything happens to either of you, I want it to happen to me, too. Now, if you can stand for just a minute. Here we go, Philip. Help hold your daddy up. I'll see what a chair will do to that window. Let me help Philip out. Be careful you don't get cut now, darling. Now, I'm going to let you go. Run clear out to the tree and we'll be right with you. Hurry it, doctor. We will, darling. Now, Alan. Oh, no, no, you don't. You first. Go on, go on. I can help you. All right. Be careful. Hurry, Alan. The roof is falling. I'm on my way. There. Now, come on, let's get away from this bonfire. Philip, are you all right now? Sure, Aunt Doctor. I'm fine. Hi, Daddy. Annie Doctor came up and cured me out of the fire. Yes, I know, son. In fact, she did the same for me. Some hero I am. How's your ankle? Oh, it's uh, it's not broken in sore. It'll be all right. Look at that house, will you? The party will be over before the fire trucks get here. Yeah. It'll even be enough to toast a marshmallow. Daddy, you know what? We'll have to go to a hotel, I guess, tonight. Daddy. Start looking for a new house tomorrow. Annie Doctor said she came to get me in the fire because she loves me. Because she... Say, wait a minute, that's right. She said the same thing to me. Celia? I do love you, Philip. I love you very much. See, Daddy? Yes, I see. Well, it looks like some love was about all the medicine that you needed, son. <laughs> that means a lot to you, doesn't it? And to me, Celia. Oh, Alan, I... Philip, my boy, you know, I think that you and I had better marry Celia before she gets away from us, don't you? You bet, Daddy. Huh? Let's get married. Well, how about it, Doctor? 
What do you say? Oh, yes, yes, oh, yes. Oh, darling. Daddy. Yes, sir, Mr. Towney. Now, what'll it be, sir? Will you buy me another Texas Ranger suit? The first thing in the morning. Oh, there goes the roof. Look at the sparks fly. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, yes, darling. It's a beautiful night. It's a beautiful night. This is Lloyd Nolan again. Folks, we're on the eve of a couple of great political conventions in the middle of an election year. Now, don't get me wrong, this isn't a political talk because, really, the fate of the world doesn't depend on so much on who or on which party is in office as it does upon the worth, bluntly, the moral and spiritual worth of the nation as a whole, meaning its people and its families. Policies are all well and good. We all have preferences. And some of us will get pretty excited this year. But we're not going to get peace, still less peace of mind, by means of plans and platforms. That will depend not on candidates or presidents, but on us. And the first step, it seems to me, is to decide that each of our families will become a family of daily family prayer. Civilization isn't going to survive except on a spiritual basis. It's too late. Things have gone too far. The family, on the other hand, is the basic unit of society. And if a majority of American families could be found praying to God, we'd have a lot less to worry about. Because it's not only true that the family that prays together stays together, but also that a world at prayer is a world at peace. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you The Problem Child Problem, starring Van Heflin and Audrey Totter. Lloyd Nolan was your host. Others in our cast were Irene Tedrow and Sammy Arg. The script was written by Paul Dawson, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to join us next week when family theater will present We Hold These Truths, starring Jeff Chandler. Your host will be the nation's top Air Force ace, Colonel Francis S. Gabreski, who has just returned from Korea. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.